trying to figure out Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, everybody. Home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community. Today is 
August 10th. It's 1130 a.m. Some say it's 1132. I say heck with you. Uh, guys, we're going to talk about crypto. We're going to get right into it. We got some BlackRock news. We got PayPal being targeted. We're going to talk about Joe Rogan and Post Malone, mm. what their takes are on CBDCs. Uh, also, Bitcoin Magazine and uh, the Utes Collection. We got a little Elon Musk stuff and, of course, Bitcoin price. And we got a great trader uh, we're going to talk to as well. A secret, secret trader. We can't reveal just yet. But mm. let's just get right to the show, guys. Uh, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, we are moving on up on CoinGecko as far as crypto prices goes. We're going to hit refresh because I'm a liar. And we're actually down 1.1% 1. Uh, 1 though. So uh, we were in the green. I hit the button. I made us go into the red. A 24-hour volume is now $34 billion for trading. We'd like to see it closer to 50, so not too great right there. Bitcoin dominance, 46.9%, and gas coming in at 831 Gwei. So we have the market is down 1%. Let's see what some of the uh, the top coins are doing here. What is going on? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, somehow I, I hit the wrong button. I hit the SEC coins there. All right, uh, Bitcoin is down 0.7%, but ETH, is up 0.2%. Uh, we have BNB uh, down half percent. XRP, it's not looking great. It is down 3% right now. Uh, we keep going. We don't really see many moves except for Shiba. Shiba is looking great. That was DZ's choice on last week's crypto picks there. So I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Remember, you said hey. the gains were gone. They're done. Yeah, There's listen, no more gains, no, he said. I, I was wrong. Yeah, Sheeb, congratulations to Sheeb Army. You guys, you defeated the rising wedge. I mean, the TA was solid but it just went the wrong way so yeah it was uh, i i went back and i checked the data it was uh tweeting it was the breakout it said yeah. last time it broke out guys it was crazy it broke out then that's uh, where the conviction came from yep. all right well, let's look at the top gainers though what i think it's xdc let's see it is xdc xdc is up 12.9 percent rocket pool up 8.6 uh maker is up 4.2 let's see we don't see too many more popular coins we have mina mina protocols up shiba is up Doge uh, up slightly, but after that it goes pretty flat. Now the lo the losers, the Becks, eh, not too bad. We have uh, no. H bar down four point three percent. Where are my Hedera fans at? H bar mm. is down a little bit. Radix is down four percent. We have Roll Bitcoin finally cooling off. I did take some profits. I sold about a quarter of my bag, and then I sold about twenty percent of my bag. This was also one of DZ's picks, but uh, I, I picked it months ago. It actually went down. You had a better entry point. So anybody who uh, copy trades DZ on the uh, BitBoy newsletter that you get for free with the Pluto Alliance. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, we're killing it on the Crucial Crypto picks. You had that pick. We, I called XTC a few months back. Nice. Yeah. It's, it, there's some yeah, I mean, those there. are two, unlike the rest of the space right now, they're an uptrend right now. Higher highs, higher lows. Yeah. Uh, most of the rest of the space, Bitcoin, Ethereum, everything else, Cardano, lower highs, lower lows. So, mm. And I was picks. talking about this coin on the morning stream. I've been saying Caspa. I need to get my Caspa. I, I want Caspa. Uh, we are now finally down for the week. Uh, it's down 1.6%. It looks like we dropped about 3.5%. Uh, when I pulled up the chart, though, it doesn't look great because you had some opportunities months ago to get in right under a penny. Uh, and then, you know, very recently, you can get in at under two cents there. Here, we're bouncing right above a penny. Uh, we go back 180 days. I think that's where you see it coming in under a penny there. So in the last 30 days, yeah, you've been a lot better off if you bought a month ago. Two and a half cents. Now about four and a half cents. Do you have any Caspa? No, I, I don't have any Caspa right now. That's probably what I want to add a little bit Chat, more. Chat, do you have any Caspa? Do you have any Caspa, Drew? No, no, I don't. And I, I have missed, felt like I missed out the whole time watching it go up. I'm, I plan to get into it when it has a good pullback. I do think that's coming, but got to stay patient for it. It's in the DAGs. I love DAGs. So yeah. I'm going to be getting one. What happened to his face? No, that's just a scar. It's just being old. It's a liver spot. I'm that old, guys. Uh, no. Uh, if I look a little bit rough, I was at the Wiz Khalifa Snoop Dogg concert. I maybe had one or two beverages. Hmm. Uh, maybe someone passed me one of those jazz cigarettes. I might have inhaled. I don't know. It was an accident, though. I will say that. Uh, but we have a quick story before we get into our charts here. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't see Frank. Frank. Oh, wait a minute. I saw the, a bulging cap off the side of a television there. Oh. Drew, were you accosted at a gas station this morning? We're, we're, don't worry. We'll get right back to crypto after I this quick story. I mean, so they just, they saw, I, I have, you know, I, I'm bringing back the roaring 20s. I carry my hard irons on a, sh a shoulder setup, and they saw that there was quite a bit of extra um, lead on me, and they just, you know, they, they were really, I, I, I ruffled some feathers this morning, had to calm them down. It's okay. It, what, it's for lots of tyranny. So, okay. There you go. Okay. Uh. You didn't like point. 
point no. anything at anyone's face or anything, <laughs> no. did you? No. Okay. I was very nice about it. Sorry. All right. Uh, well, speaking of the charts, we got someone who's going to chart like no one's ever charted in their life. You hear me, Nathan Drake from Uncharted? This is the new Uncharted. Move over. Who, who started Uncharted with that guy? Is that stupid Spider-Man, the, the skinny dork? Oh, not, my Not gosh. Garfield, the other dork. Uh, why am I blinking on his name? Not Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire's forever, my Peter Parker. I don't know why I'm blinking on his name. <sighs> Nathan Drake. It has Mark Wahlberg, and then, you know. Have you seen Uncharted? No, I have not. Oh, okay. not that okay. You'd be the Mark Wahlberg of the movie, though. I'll say right. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. And I said, uh, you said I, I chart like... Ben Tom Holland, yep. Okay. Well, you said I would chart better than anybody charted. I thought you said something else. I, I misheard that. You, you hear that, Amerigo Vespucci? Go <laughs> suck it, all right? This is the real charter, all right? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on guys hope you're having a good day we do have some interesting stuff to look at on the charts and if you guys watched the show yesterday when i was on here talking to ben um you will know shout out to the candles in chat i see you guys um but uh, you guys will know we were looking at some very specific things for a potential cool off for Bitcoin, and we did indeed get that. So I want to talk about what we saw on the charts uh, that were kind of making us think we may get a little bit of a move to the downside. Nothing too crazy, not not like a crazy dump or anything. Um, but I kind of want to show you guys so that way, you know, the next time you see these setups pop up, you guys can see them before price actually moves. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. And I will just start off here by... Those are Ben's little circles. Yeah, let me go. Let me go ahead, and uh, I'll just get rid of the circles here. Boom, boom. Uh, I'm gonna clear it. Hopefully, he doesn't fire me. Uh, mm. We're just gonna go ahead and clear it. Uh, but. Guys, as you know, yesterday, we were looking here at the one hour time frame uh, as we were approaching a key level of resistance. And uh, I apologize because I'm not on my actual, uh, my personal chart here. So the levels are not there. So just bear with me for just a second. Turn off Market Cipher A real quick. And uh, we'll go ahead and pull our range here. That's not what I want. Come on. This is what happens when Frankie Candles tries to use a trackpad. Mm -hmm. um, it's but the worst. It is the worst. We used to have a mouse wired up here. Uh, Johnny took it back because, yeah. <laughs> there used to be a backup mouse, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll pull our range here, guys. And as you know, we were looking at this point of control of our range here. Uh, and as we were coming up to this level yesterday, we were starting to do something that would indicate a potential move to the downside. And what we saw here forming was a bearish divergence, right? So we had higher highs on our price action right here. And we had lower highs on our momentum waves here on Market Cipher B. If you guys don't use Market Cipher, which I do highly, highly recommend, it's an indicator that I use every single day. Um, but you can also find these divergences on free indicators like the RSI. Uh, so if you guys are out there, you can see these signals without a premium indicator. I just want to put that out there. Um, there's no barrier to entry uh, to read the charts and and uh, you know make profitable trades. Right? You could do this with all the free tools. Uh, we live in a time where there is so much free stuff available, um, but obviously the the uh, paid indicators obviously make things a little bit more clear to see and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, we had these higher highs on our price with our lower highs on our momentum waves, which and, and not only that, guys, but the key the key here was that we were doing this into a key level of resistance, which again was that point of control. Let me get rid of this VPVR, um, which we did that. We put that bearish divergence into this key level of resistance, which was making us think we would get a move down here. Um, and I did get into a short at this point. It is up at, uh, it's up about 27%. Um, and yeah, it is continuing to play out here as we reject this value area low. However, I'm not necessarily expecting this to be a giant, giant dump. And the reason for that is if you come up to some of these medium hourly timeframes, you can see the VWAP here on Market Cipher B getting a little bit rejected at the zero line. And what I am specifically talking about here, guys, is this yellow wave. Once we get this yellow wave to curve back up and cross over that zero line, we will likely print another green dot, which will likely give us another move up. Um, so with that, on top of the fact that some of these higher hourly timeframes have our money flow, well, actually, we're kind of starting to leak out here again. Um, but if you look at your eight hour money flow, generally curving to the upside, this would indicate that the trend will continue to the upside, right? No guarantees, obviously. Um, but when you see money flow like that, if you get it to cross over into the green, it's a good indication um, that we may, even if we do come down a little bit more here, we may be able to put in a higher low before continuing back to the upside. And again, that is based off of money flow. Um, so 
With that being said, kind of really what I wanted to talk to you guys about was this bearish divergence. If you're out there and you're new at reading the charts, this is one of the simplest signals you can look at uh, to try to find a reversal on price. Uh, like if I could go back and start my trading journey all over again, I would start off learning, di obviously, you know, learning the basics of how to read a chart. Um, but, you know, one, once you get into the nitty gritty of it, uh, I would study divergences, study volume profiles. It would have expedited my journey like tenfold. Um, so, uh, I just kind of wanted to point that out. Very, very simple, simple technique to keep an eye out for here on the charts. And this does form on all different time frames. Obviously, the higher time frame, the stronger the signal. Um, but where is price going from here? Again, I would expect, guys, what I am looking for here is the next four-hour green dot as that VWAP starts to work its way up towards that zero line. Once that prints, I would expect another move up. If we continue down here, I am simply going to look at our local range for support. Let me go ahead and pull that really quickly. So if we continue down here, uh, basically what I will look at, well, actually, let me get rid of this range just so we don't confuse anybody. Um, Right now, we are getting accepted into this local range. So if we continue down, your next key level of support, we talked about this yesterday, is going to be about $29,170. And if you're able to break through that, your next level of support is going to be about $29,000 even. And the fact that we have been, uh, we have broken down below this value area high and bearishly retested it, um, it could mean that it is more likely that we will come down towards that POC. But if we do come down here, guys, again, because of that eight hour money flow starting to curve its way to the upside, I will be looking for longs down at this point of control and value area low. And uh, another reason for that, guys, is if you pull your FIB, right, mm -hmm. from this low, to the high, you do have some beautiful confluence actually right here between your point of control and your golden pocket. And a lot of times when you get a retracement to the downside and you're looking for a higher low to come in, a lot of times it will come in on that golden pocket or 786. So these are the next two support levels that I will be looking for a long position on. Uh, and again, until we break these lows down here, I wouldn't expect the downtrend to, to, to continue. So kind of simply put, uh, let me grab my brush tool real quick, and we will just go, uh, if we continue down here, I will be starting to look for longs at this golden pocket. If we break the golden pocket, I will simply be looking for longs at the 786 for a potential continued uptrend, again, based off that eight-hour money flow. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we're looking for, guys. Got that bear div on the one hour to play out almost perfectly, um, and now we're approaching those levels of support that we looked at yesterday, um, and sometimes it's just a waiting game. Sometimes you got to sit on your hands and wait for price to come into your trap. Don't just take trades anywhere on the chart. You want to have your uh, actual trading plan plan in place, find your key levels, which I call your trap, right? And then you wait for price to approach your trap. Once price gets to your trap, you look for the signals, whether bullish or bearish, whether you're looking for longs or shorts, and then you don't pull the trigger on the trade until you get those confirmations at your key level. Uh, so that's what we're looking at, guys. I think that is all I got. I don't know if this is a face out here or if this is someone on there, but it does look like someone popped up on a chart there. Um, but it really is. Well, that's me, that's me, that's me. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's all we got. Watch those lows. Again, not really getting worried until we crack these lows that we made back here uh, at about 28,650. Until we start losing those levels, I do think that we will uh, likely put in a higher low here based off that money flow. So um, yeah, I think that's all we got. Um, back Hold to these. Frankie. Yeah. Do you breathe through your calves or some type of gill system? How do you breathe? <laughs> This is a common question. Um, yes, uh, the answer is yes. I actually have uh, six gills, okay. uh, three on each leg. They are on the inside of my calves. A lot of people think they would be on the outside for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but they are on the inside of my calf. Um, and yeah, six gills specifically. And it gotcha. allows me to hold my breath for over 45 minutes, which is nice. Thank That's how clarifying. I'm able to stream for so long. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> negative, negative seven points for Drew for drawing Frankie into some nonsense when we're here to talk crypto. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Drew, negative seven points. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's all I got. Back to DZ. Also, uh, yeah, shout out to DZ. I hope you have fun at Snoop Dogg. Uh, I missed out on it, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, back to DZ. Burner. Bing, Burner bong. There. Burner was there. DJ Wiz Khalifa. Drama. Ah. Wiz. Too short. Hmm. Warren G. I regulated. <laughs> it was a good time. All right, uh, everybody, calf hydrogen generators. That makes the most sense. All right. No. Uh, hey, Robert, how are you doing these days? Natural auctioneer. All right. Uh, I've done that before. It's uh, it's pretty easy skill set. You just got to, like, master one or two phrases. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and some weird like some weird things like that. And then, boom, you are you can be an auctioneer as well. All right. Uh, 160K by next week for Bitcoin. Yep, you got it. All right. Uh, let's talk a little XRP. The main story here is the SEC appeal with the XRP. is a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of legal 
mumbo jumbo. We're going to try to sift through the noise and give you the real breakdown here. SEC seeks to file an appeal against XRP crypto case ruling. Here we have uh, Gary Gensler looking at your tax records. Uh, the SEC has just announced plans to seek an interlocutory appeal against this July 13th court decision that Ripple Labs token is not a security when sold at crypto exchanges sold to retail. So we had one favorable ruling, one unfavorable ruling. They're obviously they're appealing the one that they didn't like. So S SEC said, uh, hey, we don't like it when XRP isn't selling things as securities. They're fine. They didn't want to appeal, of course, anything working in their favor. But XRP is not looking good uh, as far as this appeal goes. XRP, we have a five dollar super Wait, chat by XRP's Bruce Wayne. He's not looking good or SEC's not looking good. According to the SEC, XRP isn't looking good. Uh, All right, XRP undervalued? Question mark. According to Bruce Wayne, DC's Morning Stream is undervalued. Hey, thank you. Uh, happy with any time slot it lands in. All right, well, let's talk about the grounds for appeal here. The SEC revealed that the appeal would be based on several grounds, including seek a legal clarification on the evidence for differences of opinions. The attorney used Judge Torres or urged Judge Torres to consider the impact an appeal will have on other lawsuits the commission is pursuing, especially in cases like SEC versus. Coinbase, also probably SEC versus Binance US. The SEC wants the court to order a stay of proceedings during the upcoming appellate review. So they're saying, hey, uh, you know how you ruled against us? Hey, we're we're also like fighting all these other crypto companies. That's not a good look for us. I don't think the, the judge is really going to care about that, though. The stance on cryptocurrency. The SEC views digital assets such as cryptocurrencies as securities and has always claimed regulatory authority. The commission has seared over 100 enforcement actions against companies involved with crypto, where many culminated in alternative dispute resolution agreements, such as settling. Uh, they are known for settling. They're not known for, uh, you know, taking something all the way to jury. Uh, if it does go to jury, this is my understanding, according to John Deaton, jury, if it goes to jury, we have second quarter of next year. Yes. Yeah. So be gearing up right around the having i could see some bullish action if they do push it back that far but uh, the big takeaway here is ultimately that has a lot more to do with the sec versus ripple not the sec versus xrp there's not a lot they can do to suppress xrp at this time uh they're not appealing they can't appeal uh against the ruling by judge torres that xrp is not a security so anyone who, who's freaking out wondering hey is this is this going to lead towards XRP getting overruled? It, that's not happening yet. I mean, that's obviously what Gary wants, but he has to stay within his legal framework, and, and that's not his option. We were saying this months ago. There's going to be a lot of back and forth with the football here. You know, we've this started in uh, 2020 in December, and you know, there's always like this <clears throat> huge landmark decision is going to be three months from now, and then it happens in three months, and it's like, oh yeah, there's an appeal process. Yeah, and then there's like, oh yeah, but now it's about to end. But like, oh yeah, well now there's like an appellate court appeal process. Uh, okay, so are there? Are we done? No, no, no. There's one above that, and then it goes to Supreme Court. There's yeah. always going to be, uh, you know, they're always going to kick the ball. All right. I, I just think the good news. I think the biggest takeaway here is this: what just happened should have no effect on stopping XRP from rallying this bull market. It might just delay Ripple's ability to go public and start getting all that stuff. They just got to clear all this stuff up first. That's the big takeaway here. XRP is safe. Yeah, well, I think big institutions, they want more of a slam dunk win. And I don't think we have the slam dunk win yet. All right, uh, expressing here, we're going to talk about Deaton here, expressing his excitement about XRP being removed from the latest list of SEC securities on CoinGecko. Deaton tweeted, today, not on the list, XRP. Uh, Deaton compared this development to how it began three years ago when the SEC claimed that Ripple sold over 14.6 billion units of digital asset security. So uh, they, there's the CoinGecko list. We actually pulled it up early in the show, so it was no longer on there. There are still are some tokens on the list, BNB, Cardano, Solana, Tron, Polygon, uh, Tuncoin, BUSD, Atom, Filecoin, ICP, Near, Algo, Sand, Axie Infinity, Mana, or Decentraland, Flow, Chilies, and uh, it's not BitTorrent. Uh, is it? No, it is BitTorrent, not BitToken, and BitTorrent as well. Mm. So Ripple CTO responded positively to this admission, saying, "Not on the list. Orange Groves live uh, live beavers warehouse receipts for whiskey casks and XRP." This is a humorous reference to some of the other items SEC has once tried to bring under its regulatory control. Just like they want to stop Ethereum, they also try to stop live beavers and whiskey casks. Man, man they always just go too far, don't they? Uh, here we have Jeremy Hogan <clears throat> breaking down Eleanor Terrett's. <clears throat> she was on the show before. Yeah. Uh, ATB as well. Uh, Taurus says the court will seek to schedule a jury trial in the second calendar quarter of 2024. Uh, so April, May, June, 2024, uh, they order both parties to submit blackout dates for trial by, uh, Wednesday, August 23rd. 
So Jeremy Hogan breaking it down. Individual uh, defendant's trial will begin around May 2024. That means final judgment in the case won't be entered until late summer 2024 at the earliest. Any appeal would go well into 2025. The gloves, on the other hand, now delays are good for XRP and Ripple. Would you agree that delays are good? Uh, well, I mean, again, good. I don't know if I'd say good, but it's not detrimental. I think John Deaton made it really clear. They expected this. You said it. We expected this. No one's surprised by anything. And ultimately, again, this is more like a last ditch effort by the SEC because they've lost and they know it. And they just don't like to wave the white flag because they they want to try to still go after these other companies and coins. So this is their own this is their only option. They had to do something in their eyes. Uh bro tip, get your mind out of the gutter. Okay. We don't need to know about that fur. And uh, you know, hey, look, it has to repel the liquids. You know, they're they're in water building dams and stuff. All right. Uh here's a question. Uh, why does it in best answers and banter uh bash Cardano but shill the heck out of Solana? Well, I mean, what would you say the easiest answer is, you two? What would you say the easiest answer is? That's their preference, and they, they deserve the right to their preference. I mean, every person in crypto has a preference of their coin. I, I think Why is it their preference? Whatever research they have done, they have decided for themselves. They prefer Solana to Cardano, and that is fair. I, I would say if them. there's a chance it's not research-based. I I would – those are two very smart people. I would say that there's a lot of research that went into their thoughts. You can make the argument it's bad research, but – they they didn't just decide to wake up and say we're pro Solana anti Cardano. They they've looked into things and have an informed opinion. It just might be wrong. It's my understanding uh, they've long had adversarial views of Cardano. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I haven't really watched the channel myself, so yeah. I, I'm kind of just you know speaking from what I've heard, not actual experience here. Uh, me, I, I I actually have a bag of Solana. Um, I have been selling. I, I've been saying I've been selling my roll bit. I sell it on Radium. I think this is Solana Dex. And I had a choice. I was selling that a roll, but do I put it into stablecoin or do I put it back into Solana? I chose stablecoin, but my next sell, I'll probably choose Solana. Yeah, probably. I, I'm I'm leaning in a direction after kind of being more anti Solana. I think it's one of those things just for diversification purposes. I think I'm going to add it back to my portfolio for the bull run. I don't expect it to outrun other cryptos, but it's kind of got that what if type of thing going on for it. So I, it is something I'm looking. I'm probably going to add a little bit back into the portfolio for this next bull market. All right. A few people think it might not be research. Some say it's only research-based. I don't know. All right. Uh, Ripple, humans are complex creatures. I'll say that. It's it's mm. not any one thing. All right. Uh, Ripple prepares response as SEC asks for appeal permission. Uh, I think that's Deaton right there thinking of Civil War battles. Uh, no, this is uh, Chief uh, Legal Officer Stuart Outeroidy, I think I'm saying it right, has responded to the recent announcement by the SEC regarding its intention to appeal Judge Torres's partial uh, judgment that favored Ripple. Uh, he asserts that SEC does not have the authority to launch an appeal. To do so, they're seeking the court's permission to proceed with what is known as this uh, interlocutory appeal. Conversely, Ripple plans to present its counter to the court filing in the coming week. A tweet from uh, him elaborates on the matter, saying SEC does not have uh, the right to appeal just yet, which is why they're asking permission to uh, file. Ripple will file its response within the court next week. Stay tuned. Uh, so it looks like this is not a normal thing that they file this interlocutory appeal. And so they're asking for permission, uh, yeah. and then they'll be granted permission or not, and whether or not they can then affect file this appeal and then ripple will have a their day in court as they get to appeal the appeal and then here we go you know in this topsy-turvy thing for the next i guess another six months it looks like at this point again it's it is just a kick the can further down the road keep delaying because you don't want you want to waste taxpayer money and not admit defeat is what gary's thinking right now all right uh stop spreading fud i don't think we i don't know, I don't uh, know which part not of yet the FUD not yet not yet it's all going to zero <laughs> sell everything there you go there you go there's your fun all right uh it, it, I, I'm, I'm watching the chart it's dropping the minute chart it's down all right uh back to the sec here the sec's pursuit of this appeal in the ripple case marks a pivotal juncture in the ongoing debate over XRP's classification. As regulatory continues, uh, clarity continues to shape the crypto landscape, this case could potentially set a precedent for how other digital assets navigate their legal standing. That's why there's a lot riding on this. Uh, and that's why the SEC is fighting it so hard. They're saying, hey, this ruling is going to be used for other cryptocurrencies, so we can't have anything favorable for a crypto protocol. It has to be all negative, and you got to be Team SEC, Judge. Come on. we got to fight these coins and prevent them from launching. Uh, that was Brad Garlinghouse. That was Brad Garlinghouse. I, I thought it was deep I was going to stop you, but you just talk so fast. <sighs> yeah, that's Garlinghouse. Sorry, I'm, I'm not... 
super familiar on my garling house uh visuals there i need mm. to be better i need to be better i, I could spot a vitalik out of a crowd of a million uh, can you spot let's see charles hoskinson easy yep. Yep. sandeep from polygon a little bit harder yeah I, uh, I don't Mashinsky know if I'd spot from him. uh celsius easy to spot yep. michael saylor easy to spot yep uh let's see who's some harder ones satoshi you know can That's you point you know who's hard to spot and i did spot him but i had to do like a double or triple take was um oh the author of uh a bitcoin standard um safadian ominous however you pronounce his name because it's safadian ominous or whatever he's so short he's very short mm -hmm. i did not i was very surprised by it literally had to take triple takes where i was like that is safadian all right there is no debate on xrp's classification it is now law sheesh uh well they're appealing this so the law is not finalized until it's you know both parties walk away from the case that's that's how i'm gonna take it because look uh, this could go all the way into the supreme court and then until then that's when we can say it is done it is complete it is final it is final right now we're not in the final stage just yet so things can be appealed they're gonna say oh you don't have permission well you don't have permission within a time frame they're gonna ask for permission there's a lot of moving parts so nothing is black and white with what XRP is or isn't as of today. It is still shades of gray. We're we're less gray than we were two months ago. Uh, we're we're kind of like the opposite of my goatee. Uh, we're, it's becoming less gray. All right, uh, Ripple and Bank for International Settlements team up for payments task force, a boost for XRP price. Oh yeah, while all this is happening, XRP has a little utility. It's, uh, it's good for intermittence and you know, it's a store of value, I think is kind of its main deal right now. Ripple. Uh, has achieved a significant milestone by becoming an official member of the Cross-Border Payments Interoperability and Extension Task Force. Oh, yeah, that thing, that prestigious group within the prestigious Bank of International Settlements. All right, BIS is pretty powerful, has that very, very rotund leader. Uh, we're, you know, they, they do make a lot of rules here. The understanding the role of BIS is often referred to as the Central Bank of Central Banks, and it serves as a global hub for cooperation and innovative thinking within the financial realm. I would say it's um, it's a global hub of cooperation and strangleholds and then a uh, moat building as they uh, try to prevent new players from joining their space. Uh, Bank of International Settlements emphasizes the importance of harmonizing efforts between public authorities and private stakeholders to refine payment systems that underpin cross-border transactions. That's a whole lot of word salad right there, isn't it? They emphasize the importance of harmonizing efforts between public and private to refine systems that underpin transactions. So uh, they're just big on the marrying of public and private sector. But yeah. that's a little bit ugly when you say that. Yeah, they're focused on government officials and public, uh, you know, uh, publicly traded companies or privately owned companies working together in collusion because we always know how that works out. Uh, so, yeah, that's a uh, it's the dark side of Ripple, right? It's 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 core path to success means working closely with governments mm -hmm. and so some people are just going to say hey that's fine i'm okay with it like you think we're you know this is kind of where i'm at like what you think government's not going to be in charge of money in like a heavy way forever probably it probably will be there's going to be pockets of people who care but majority of people are just going to be fine you know scanning their orb or their brown eye whatever it might be but there are going to be people who like to fight it Mm -hmm. uh john blake wants to be uh working for the d's uh, i know limited production because shine your head before streams okay see sometimes i don't know where these things are going i just start reading it sec of course uh we're going to appeal we have unlimited taxpayer money for this they do have unlimited money warriors code but what they don't have is unlimited manpower uh that is the sec's bottleneck right there so they they, they only have so many people uh, they can't be spread like butter over too much bread as i like to say uh solana was manipulated by sbf all i need to know benjamin cowan has a pretty good thesis for solana and solana thesis is because of sbf and ftx it got beaten down a lot harder than it probably needed to mm. and so that's why you know it can outperform uh moving into this next stage of the cycle there uh jimmy's fine uh spreading it and letting it get scanned there okay ain't nothing wrong with that hey uh there's probably hey atlanta downtown area there's probably some spots for you uh mm. also in florida all right i think we're ready for the steak uh x minute right Ooh, we are x minute brought to you by steak i gotta get in i'm gonna slap some slots tonight i'll let you know tomorrow how it goes i <laughs> think that's all we got
Dang it. DCA and Prey brought up a good point. Because of SPF, it also got manipulated up more mm -hmm. than it should have been. So very good point. Um, yeah. I think the manipulation down is a little bit stronger it, uh, because the manipulation up was pretty much wiped out very quickly. Uh, it was the, manip the down pressure that was uh, really good. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Solana. I think they have a lot of things to solve, especially on the dev team. But I... It's one of those things I have to give it to the Solana community. A turtle they're head. doing some impressive things that makes you say they're not going to go to zero. And there is a chance that they hit a new all-time high. And that doesn't mean that you're a Solana lover to say that. I think that's just good observation. Like right now, looking at price action, I think I talked about this the other day, both Cardano and Solana are, are exactly 90% down from their all-time highs. Uh, so if you're going to mm. continue to root and say great things about Cardano from a price action standpoint, believing how far it can go. Again, I think Cardano outpaces Solana, but I think... I think I've just gotten to a place where if someone has the opinion that Solana's not going to make new all-time highs, I'll respect it. But I also think you got to be open to the concept of Solana doing something impressive. Um, because, yeah, there was a lot of FUD there that they are doing a decent job of overcoming. Yeah. Uh, guys, ATB will be back tonight. Yesterday was uh, the concert, Taco's birthday, so I took off. And then the day before that, Nick uh, had a baby, so he couldn't fill in for me after I had... Uh, I, I was numb, drooling. I, I couldn't do it after the dentist work. All right, uh, let's go to the crypto minute, the X minute brought to you by Stake. Uh, first, we have Sam Harris on his public humiliation tour, uh, international humiliation tour. So, yeah, he's just further and further embarrassing himself at this point. I used to uh, follow a lot of what he said. Uh, here we have WorldCoin Authority submits ZK proofs of eyeball scans. So WorldCoin has spent half a million dollars in gas over the last 40 days. That means uh, 4.5 million annual in gas fees. I mean, this is kind of just saying the next 40 days will be indicative of the you know remainder of the year. I don't think that's true. So this is moon math by Ryan Adams. Uh, but even with the moon math, the, the story remains the same. WorldCoin, other protocols are going to be burning a lot of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. ETH is the new oil. So, uh, hey, maybe uh makes me want to buy more ETH. I will say that. I feel like yeah. my ETH is low when I when I see that type of narrative. Yeah. Where are my uh, link Marines at? Hit that like button if you're like me and you have like four chain link. You know, by the end of the tomorrow, DCA, I'm going to get to four and a half. I'm going to buy a half <laughs> one. Link is one cycle behind on ETH. The similarities of the ETH cycle one and link cycle one are insane. The only differences are the percentage increases and decreases. So, uh, you know, you can kind of map it. It looks pretty similar looking pretty good and i'm feeling pretty good about my link bag i might even try to get up to five by tomorrow uh we, we do you know it's kind of a cliche to say thoughts and prayers but really you know i, I know some people that are affected by hawaii you might know yeah. some people affected by hawaii it's not a great thing I, i've lived in a coastal town i know what it's like when you have devastating uh when you have mother nature just come in and wipe its sack on your forehead you know what i mean so that that's essentially what happened here mother nature has a sack what a, hey it's 2023 who knows um so it's you know, uh, hopefully, if you know anyone out there, they're safe. We want everyone to be safe. Yeah. Uh, do y'all know anyone? Hawaii? I don't know anyone who lives there now. I don't know. Okay. I thought for sure Drew's going to be like, oh, I lived there for six months. No, no, no. You know, my uncle was the king some. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's, that's, that's a Drewism there. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done it, folks, to be fair. It's been like months. All right. Uh, Mark, I believe, you know, in retrospect, he was, I believe it. All right, uh, Mark. I had one this morning. You want me to give you one that I gave this morning? Yeah, yeah. What's what's your Drew? Those who don't know what a Drew is, Drew's like has some weird yeah. connection to everything. You, like you say something, he's like, oh, yeah, no, my my second cousin worked yeah. on the atomic bomb. Oh, and you're I like, what? The, we got, uh, so it was like eight years ago, I played this show in Durango, Colorado, and we literally broke the stage in half. And the band that was following us stitched up heart, which they might be coming out here to the yeah, office. Stitched up heart. Yep. Um, they uh, actually did, did we, we kind of like just called the whole show off and it turned into an absolute melee. I was punching people off the stage as I was singing. It was probably one of the best shows of my life. So there okay. we go. Yep. Okay. There you so, go. Uh, do you have a scar from that night? Absolutely not. No. Mental? Yes. <laughs> All right, good. As long as there's some sort of psychological or yeah. I, I want permanent damage. Okay. That's <laughs> you want, you need a good story. You need permanent damage. Yeah. All right. Uh, for those uh, here, a uh, big shout out to the board filter team. I, I went ahead and got me one of these, uh, this access pass. So, they're just doing uh, insane, insane building. And guys, they, they have some, I think it's all public. Uh, in fact, I think, I'm not sure. They have some pretty good IP that no one else has. Um, I, you know, I always talk about the gerontocracy. Now we're at the, I don't know what it's called when they're in their 90s. But uh, this is just, it's it's embarrassing. This is Banana Republic stuff. And uh, here we have Vivek. Man, he just brings the freaking heat uh, when it comes to uh, just... Drew, you, you would like this. You could probably do a whole uh, story on this. This is uh, just the Saudis' involvement with 9-11 and, mm. you know, any kind of narrative that 
saying, you know, hey, maybe the government lied to us about one or two things. You know, you, you kind of just shut down and get silenced. You idiot, you conspiracy theorist. Well, there, there's facts now because they've 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 walked back some of the claims from yeah. the 9-11 commission. Uh, breathe, guys. We're going to be in Vegas uh, August 12th. So uh, look out for it. Oh, no, that's the mega space. We're going to be in uh, Vegas uh, end of September. So check that out. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Desert crypto. And uh, here we're going to end it with this. Gareth Soloway. We love Gareth. Gareth's the man. Uh, just talking about, hey, this isn't going to be uh, as bad as, uh, you know, when it comes. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. This is actually going to be worse than you expect here. China exports are collapsing. Worst decline since COVID. Imports are also down. Speaks not only to the major slowdown in China, but also to the global slowdown as exports crash. Not uh, sure if it's American exceptionalism or uh, just we're naive here, but people are thinking U.S. will be immune. We're not going to be. Uh, the consumer base is going to run up debt, and then uh, we'll have to slam on the brakes. Uh, so he's saying it's spiking today as we move to relative safety. Yields are dropping as smart money moves into bonds as a well for safety. So uh, just be careful out there. Love Garrett, though. We need to get him back on. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to talk a little uh, Bitcoin, some mm -hmm. some BlackRock, mm -hmm. some Maxis? Is, uh, is this a story here? Yep. Starts with that CPI data. Uh, CPI. Did you you guys cover it? Investing Bros? Yeah. When's their show? When is when can well, we catch yeah, you in the shroom, man? It's a heavy it's a heavy morning here at Hit Network because hey, I'm trying to lose some weight. You got, so you I don't the, appreciate that. You got the Ben show going on eight thirty. Investing Bros. We go live nine to ten. You're at nine thirty. Nine thirty so, to ten every yeah. morning. ATB has a morning stream. Ultimately, I started a little late. People but. need to just have their setup at home with three different uh, computers and three different screens, watching all three of those shows at the same time. Uh, but yeah, one of the big things we do is we do talk about all the economic stuff happening. Uh, today, we we got the CPI numbers coming in 3.2%. And some people are saying that's above, some people are saying below. Uh, if you share my screen here, Drew, it, this is on uh, tradingeconomics.com. I just gotta allow this, I guess. Uh, our inflation year over year coming at 3.2, last month with 3%. Consensus was 3.3, but forecasted 3.1. So it's kind of right there in the middle. The only thing that is kind of, the, the price isn't responding bullish, but I don't know if people saw, we covered it yesterday, the Cleveland Fed was predicting closer towards 4%. I think actually over 4%. So it did come in still low. 3.2 could be low in that regard. But according to Trading Economics, this was right there in the middle of expectation. And uh, since then, price is actually moving slightly to the downside. But re in reality, it's not really doing anything. This was a nothing burger. What could be interesting is over the next, like, this afternoon, we'll hear from uh, Harker and Bostic, who are chairman at the Fed. There'll be other speeches given over the next week or so. So let's hear what the Fed says and what their response is. Uh, recently, there's been way more effect on price action from Jerome Powell and other Fed members talking about interest rate hikes rather than the actual FOMC meetings themselves. So could be interesting to pay attention to this, but as it stands right now, it's a slight tick up from last month. Uh, but I have a sneaky suspicion, DZ, even like what Gareth's on right there. I think that I think Americans could be blindsided if they think that inflation's just straight down from here. I think we could see another another spike. If you look at the history of inflation as well, it rarely is a straight line up or down. There's just like price action, there's usually some play so, in so it. So we're gonna need Sandra Bullock to adopt us. Yeah, mm, probably. It's gonna be bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh what's that guy's name? The guy from the Yeah, the real guy. The, uh Goodness gracious, man! I'm come off on, man. On my, You're the sports guy. Trip. I know that's I'm, I'm off today. I'm I'm forgetting his name. I'm the one who went to the Wiz Snoop fair, concert. He was a he he's an offensive the offensive lineman. They don't get it, they don't get there. as great attention. Okay. Um, Someone it, in the chat, the chat will figure it out. Yeah, chat they're gonna say it, it here chat, in chat just a second. It. All right, all right. Uh, the blind side guy. All right, well, let's talk about uh, this uh, inflation data. Trading is largely flat. It was really close to what people were expecting. Uh, so it was risen to 3.2 from 3%. Uh, the forecast, though, we're only going to be 3.3%. So we're coming in right at the uh, forecast there. Uh, here we have uh, just the Bitcoin chart. We have slightly positive uh, for the news. Uh, it's accelerated into headline inflation. Uh, so nice little uptick there. Then, you know, this is kind of some of the data we we're looking at that Tim had on there. Uh, do they have the name yet? Come Michael on, what's Orr. the Michael name? Orr. Michael Orr. Michael Orr. Okay, yeah. so I saw Orr. I didn't know if they're talking about Orr a mob or yeah. some freaking Cardano NFT there. All right, uh, Bitcoin Magazine, BlackRock versus Bitcoin Maxis. Is Bitcoin money or a store of value? Why can't it be both? Can't we all just get along? Uh, gold bugs and people who want to use it to buy coffee. Regardless of one's own perspective on whether it's a financial asset or already established form of money, one thing is clear. It is up to the market to decide the role of Bitcoin. The collective power of invested capital, market liquidity will always be the overriding factor. 
Well, some would say a uh, transaction per second and stuff like that might matter too. But anyways, you know, when it, anyways, I, I, I digress. Many of these entities have bought into the assets digital gold narrative pioneered by early maxis and subsequently popularized by Michael Saylor. Instead of focusing on monetary uses, this approach views Bitcoin as a long-term investment vehicle, inflation hedge, or store of value, or as Michael Saylor would say, it is granite, is granite in the most power popular and most valuable asset in the world which is manhattan real estate it's granite in manhattan is this trump or yeah Saylor? that was more trump I say, that was very trumpish i i thought i Here's heard you wrong the, I, I can't I, I need to watch some michael Saylor. no uh trump, he's got like a higher trump, you got to do the hand stuff too yeah yeah the thing yeah i don't know you know what i, I blame uh it was real cloudy where i was at folks you know i, I left the concert my throat was a little sore yeah. <sighs> Plus all those morning streams, guys. I, I I can't. I don't have the timber. Is that what it's called? Or the pitch? Yeah, the I don't pitch. have the pitch, man. Here's the thing. I I I'm dang it, man. I'm I'm embarrassed. Hands. It's so bad. I'm gonna it's have to work. Hands. It, it, Trump talks with his hands. So talks and, with his hands. Yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. I like the dollar. Maybe the best. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Back to the story. He also does that. We're keeping uh, it on track. <laughs> no, not at the risk of stating the obvious. Yes, yes. Uh, as we go up the rails, Bitcoin is still not an instrument for buying coffee. Although the ability to swap sats for a single serve is nice. What is money anyways, he said after he passed the J. Uh, but who are we to say what money is? To paraphrase two quotes from uh, Alan Greenspan. Uh, I understand the history of money. When I get some, it's soon history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that actually is pretty good. I like that. I like that. All right, next quote. It's no longer possible to clearly define money with ever-expanding financial instruments. Okay, well, that one was like all serious. All right, uh, here we uh, to, to tie a bow on it. I should reiterate that markets are smarter than all of us, and capital goes hand-in-hand -hand with the markets. Sovereign nations will always want to be a part of the market economy and earn a pie piece of the capital pie. Whatever happens, don't expect the Bitcoin business to die down anytime soon. Um, oh, yeah. Markets are smarter than us. It's always priced in. Uh, you, you you know the guy that works at the warehouse that sees the thing. This is like a famous green text or something. But you know you know the forklift operator that saw the thing and the thing broke and the truck ran out of gas. So then this is going to run out and the AC broke. And you have the inside knowledge. The markets are priced it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know the CEO. It's your uncle, and he told you the secret. The markets have priced it in. Oh, you've done TA and you're head and shoulders and you've seen this thing on the Fibonacci. No one has seen at all. The markets have priced it in. So the markets are always going to be smarter than us, guys. Uh, I think that's just good advice to, to just have in your brain. Don't try to be smarter than the markets. You can be smarter than the other traders. It's PVP, but the market will always beat you. Uh, let's see. Sailor sounds like Pat Mahomes. I don't know. Does he? No. No? Okay. I'm no. here. No. Pat Trump Mahomes is a sounds boomer. like Kermit the Frog. All right, 100 coin. Got to check it out. It's a good name, but probably like 20 of those coins have been released, if not a 1,000. Uh, yeah, they were those type of clouds, R.A. Daniel. They were exactly those type of clouds. Uh, blind side effect was the Lawrence Taylor effect. Uh, yeah, Lawrence Taylor also uh, light crack, too. All right, uh, let's uh, talk about Maxine oh, Waters here. Uh, Trump 2099. Uh, he better get, put his brain in a jar pretty quickly. Hey, with AI and cloning these days. But this is off the rails. Back to crypto. Yep. <laughs> Has anyone got more video footage? Like, that guy's way up there when it comes to that. All right, uh, Congresswoman uh, Maxine Waters criticizes PayPal's entry into the dollar peg stablecoin arena without federal regulatory approval. Uh, let's see. She criticized. Remember, she was the one that was cozy cozy with SBF in the photo. So just remember that, that Maxine Waters, oh, the one that has her arm around Sam Bankman Freed. Yeah, that one. So uh, she said uh, the launch of this new... Uh, dollar back stable coin always move the d and change to a different letter and rearrange those i can't unsee it as she believed the company should have waited for federal approval before proceeding here's what she said in this written statement i'm deeply concerned that paypal's chosen to launch at stable coin while there is still no federal framework for regulation can we look at maxine waters uh age can you look that yeah. up real quick I i'm wondering how old maxine waters is she's up there all right given paypal's size and reach Federal oversight and enforcement of a stablecoin operations is essential. She emphasized that they must supervise stablecoin issuers. She is 84 years old. Can we share? Uh, can we share his screen? Mm. I don't know if we could pull that oh, up. Yeah. yeah. So if you're just wondering who are we talking about, we're talking about the uh, the octogenarian uh, ruling class. I remember back in my day it was septenarian or septuagenarian. Now it's octogenarian. Mm. Uh, soon it'll be uh, whatever the one is for 90s there. But yeah, so this 85-year-old person uh, is telling us about, you know, how technology should oh, and shouldn't Oh, that's true. Operate. Her birthday is next week. 
Happy she's days. about to be 85, huh? Yeah, she's about to be 85. Happy birthday, Maxine. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Five years away from being 90. Okay, yeah. Uh, she washed Jesus' feet. Okay, mm. hey, throw out some old jokes. I used to love your mama jokes, your mama so old jokes. Uh, your, your mama so poor, you know. Your mama so poor, I went to your house, I walked in the front door, I fell out the back. You know, some of those things. Those things were always good. Did, you, you were homeschooled, yeah, so we how, had... how awkward were yo mama jokes at homeschool? Yeah, it was, it was pretty weird. Uh, had to had to. Was it just your dad bullying you? No, <laughs> I had to bully myself. Okay. That self-responsibility. Okay. But this is off the rails. Back to crypto. I mean, I'm actually kind of interested. You're like saying it in the mirror. Listen, if they want to hear more of those stories, we'll, we'll do them somewhere no, else. No, no, no. It's, it's fine. We, we did it like 48 minutes into the show. Yeah, you know? mm. All right. Tim wants us to talk about crypto, folks. Yep. Uh, yo mama jokes will never get old. All right. Uh, when she was a girl, the Dead Sea was just getting sick. Oh, that's a good one. That's, that's a good cool. one. All right. Uh, U.S. Bank reveals $170 million in crypto holdings. Q2 earnings report. Uh, I was looking at this uh, this morning. This is SoFi Bank. It's a San Francisco bank there. Uh, yeah, San Francisco Bank uh, revealed it holds $170 million in crypto. Uh, it says they serve over 6 million customers and have seen a significant increase in its crypto holdings compared to last quarter. They got Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and ETH Classic. Uh, here we have some of the numbers. I think this is in uh, thousands, right? So is this $82 million? $82 million in Bitcoin $55 million in Ethereum. Their uh, next coin is all other, followed by Dogecoin. They have $49 uh, million. And then uh, Cardano, they have, or I'm sorry, $4.9 million. Cardano, they have $4.5 million. I'm um, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, these are big doubling of their Bitcoin. Um, actually reduced the amount of Cardano. Uh-oh. Uh, everything else is a slight uh, increase there. All right. So they not only hold crypto, but also allow customers to buy and sell various cryptocurrencies, but doesn't offer any staking services. Uh, so it looks like uh, just a little custodial service. But it has not gone down well with the Fed Reserve and lawmakers. They're questioning their banking law compliance while reminding them of their January 24 deadline. Uh, Cointelegraph reached out to get clarity on its deadline and how it could change the holdings, but haven't received a response at the time. So, look. Seems like they're doing a good job. I mean, I'm sure they have, you know, attestations and it's probably pretty safe there, but they're going after them. DZ is allowed to go off the rails. Thank you, Crit Cats. Thank you, Crit Cats. I'll break you off a piece and push you in my pocket. Uh, the problem is the young people don't want to be involved. Someone's going to do it. If they don't, they will. Break the choke. Break the chokehold, folks. Hey, Vivek is only 38. He was 37 like two days ago. Uh, your mama saw she used to ride a school on a dinosaur. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Dave Digital's on thin ice again. Dave Digital. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Joe, the, the wrench guy. All right. Uh, I remember Joe, the plumber. I still work for Joe, the plumber here. Mm. Uh, Carolina B says, hey, Tim's keeping it on track, and she likes it. Listen, Caroline B is a fan, it looks like, so yeah. I like you, Caroline B. You get my <laughs> thumbs up. You and Tim need to work uh, for Pennsylvania-based railroads. All right. Uh, mm. No F. Let's talk to Joe Rogan. Uh, do you ever watch JRE? I do. Actually, I I've started listening to JRE clips on the way to work. Very interesting stuff. Drew, do you listen to JRE? Chat, do All you listen time. to JRE? Yes or no? All the time. And yeah. I'll sit through the three hour, four hour shows. No, he's like it. on episode 2000. Uh, we all like, we weren't listening episode 40, right? You know, when it was like just all comedians, you know, it'd be like the right. 18th yeah. time they've been on. Uh, when did you guys start listening to him again? Again? Yeah. I, I definitely like, was when listening did you to him start a couple years ago, but window. I think I, I started listening to him a lot more about four or five weeks ago. Okay. I started uh, heavily after Elon because I, I okay. used to listen to WTF with Mark Maron. I, I listen to I listen to Adam Crow. I listen to a lot of podcasts pretty early, like when podcasts were real new. And I remember, you know, I, I, I listened to a couple of JRE episodes, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I prefer this other comedian over this guy. And I, I listened to uh, forget Tim Ferriss for like scientists. So I didn't listen, you know. Hey, you know, we have this cool researcher. I'm like, well, I'll listen to Tim Ferriss for that, not Joe Rogan. If I want mm -hmm. a comedian. I'll listen to, you know, Mark, uh, Mark Maron for that. Not I Joe Rogan. But I then after the Elon, I started watching the Elon episode. I remember okay. watching that episode and wondering, why is Tesla stock going down? I just right. want to buy Tesla stock. Yeah, that was stupid. And I've been watching it since. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Henry likes the nonsense. Uh, wait, what? Oops. Uh, Dave, hey, man, you are in the pocket now. All right. Uh, that is you in my pocket. I am excited, too. All right. Let's talk about Joe Rogan and the Post Malone episode. Have you yeah. watched it yet? Yeah. Okay. Have you guys watched it? Been watching Joe since Fear Factor. I heard young people didn't know that's the same guy. Like it's like really? there's videos on TikTok. No, Wait, that, that, that's, this is the guy from the blah blah blah. I remember when I first watched JRE, I was like, 
I, I, my thought was, oh, the Fear Factor guy has a podcast. Yeah, hmm. I like news radio. I was a big fan of uh, God, Phil Hartman. All right, let's talk about the story here. No freaking way. Joe Rogan, Post Malone, slam U.S. government CBDCs. Uh, this is a popular talking point among public, garnering takes from comedians, rappers, and presidential candidates alike. Uh, here we have Joe Rogan. He blasted the idea of a CBDC, describing it as game over, man. Game over scenario for American citizens. Uh, in the episode two days ago, uh, Rogan and Post Malone turned to topics surrounding the U.S. financial system, pausing to focus on the potential abuses of power that come with a CBDC. Typically, they have around 11 million uh, listeners per episode. However, Post Malone has about 30 million uh, followers. I'm I'm going to say this will probably have 20, 25 million views. Here's what Rogan had to say on CBDCs. No fucking way. No way. That's what I think. I think that's checkmate. That's game over. Have you ever seen a chimpanzee? Aliens. Rogan spelled out a scenario where a tyrannical government could tie the flow of a CBDC to one's social credit score, saying citizens could easily be cut off from their finances for breaking the rules if they decide somehow or another that you need some social credit score system and it's for the benefit of society and they outline that, they can track your behavior and your tweets and all your things. They just decided you effed up and the rules are the rules. Uh, let's see. So there's a little clip there. Malone also mentioned his concerns with the banking system in the U.S., noting that FDIC insurance only covers bank account values up to a quarter million dollars. And uh, they also discussed the decision by the Canadian government to freeze the bank mm -hmm. accounts associated to the Freedom yeah. Convoy truckers. So if you donated money to those truckers, they froze your bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here they are talking about that as well. Malone argued that the U.S. government has too much control over the flow of everyday uh, people's finances, and they could potentially uh, cut off funding to anyone at a moment's uh, notice. I was honestly surprised. I, I guess I didn't know that much about the personal choices of Post Malone. He was more base than I thought he was going to be. Yeah. I don't uh, know why I thought he would have... I don't know why I just didn't. I was very surprised hearing everything that came out of his mouth. Joe so bald, I could see his thoughts. I take I, I, I resemble that yeah. comment there. Uh, mm. Should we uh, play the minute and a half clip? I think people like, you know, yeah, it's Post yeah. Malone. All right, let's do it. There's two clips. We're just going to play this one. Hold on. Give me one sec. I, I would just say, I would just shut everybody's shit down and say it was an attack from another country. Mm. The, if, if New York or L.A. collapses the rest of the world follows suit. So talk about a lot. Only like fucking 3% of your money is actually mm. real. The rest is fucking a... Oh, God. There's too much cursing. Yeah, he's, he's cussing a lot there. <laughs> but I this matters fine. a lot, man. And yeah, like I remember when Robert Malone was allowed to come on Joe Rogan's podcast. That's when what really tuned me into Joe Rogan again um, because he brought to light what Ro dr robert malone was talking about with um you know certain jabby jabs and then you know he's bringing up the trucker convoy and how they can be controlled like this is really uh monumental for me to see joe continue to lean into the subject matter in an open and honest way because this is stuff that other than people like me a lot of people are afraid to talk about so you know it, it, I, they're both named malone uh, <laughs> yeah a couple of comments imagine taking anyone with a face tattoo seriously Fair, fair point there. Uh, DZ, my man, you aren't bald, just a receding hairline. It's all good. Hey, thank you very much there. Uh, what was, oh, uh, did Tim just say based? OMG, I'm getting old. Someone else said, I don't know what based means. Uh, how would you describe the definition of based, Drew? I think people look to you. Uh, just very traditional mindset. Yeah. Um, a, it, a mindset that would have worked. I mean, in, what does that mean? Uh, you want to enslave people and build I would, pyramids? I, would, I don't you, know what that means. You kind of I want to have a like teepee. The what opposite of woke. If woke is your progressive and your you're awake now and you're seeing all the new things that based is like, Hey, you're traditional, you're conservative. You, you have that kind of, uh, it, it's associated more with conservative type of mindset than a, than a more progressive liberal. Mindset. All right. Well, conservative could also mean different things. So if I'm in okay. San Francisco and I'm conservative relatively compared to other people, or if I'm in the strictest Muslim nation again, you know, I, I would also say based uh, the, the way I use it at least. And I've seen most people I see use it has a lot more to do with just not following like a, dumb sheep whatever the that's that's how i take it. base yeah. to me just means you stand for your convictions yes that's that's what it means to me yeah uh all right well oh. uh let's see let's see x here all right yeah they, they have that all right let's talk a little uh utes uh let's do a little nft news here nft migration hmm. and where's the millions all right uh here's the real I, i'm sure they're going to talk about all right so utes nft collection they are going to return they're returning the three million dollar grant to polygon as it opts to migrate to Ethereum. Those who remember, Utes and D-Gods were on Solana, 
And then uh, D Gods went to Ethereum, and the Utes got paid three million dollars by Sandeep and Polygon to come migrate over there. Well, it looks like they said no, we're not going to do it. So uh, they are now moving back to Ethereum. It looks like they have to uh, give back the three million dollar grant. Uh, and, uh, Polygon also revealed plans to plans to reinvest a million in the refunded grant into its native network of developers. So Polygon's getting that three million, and they're going to put one million back into uh, the next wave of uh, cool NFTs. So uh, meanwhile, uh, Frank the Gods, also known as uh, Rohun Bora, also commented on Ute's upcoming mic uh, migration. He first he praises on the Polygon team for their incredible partnership. However, he also added it's ultimately in the best interest of D-Labs for Utes to be on the same chain as D-Gods there. So uh, big, big news there. I still have full disclosure. I have some dust. Uh, I'm way up. I should probably take profits, but I don't know, man. That that Frank guy, he just keeps building, so it makes me just not want to sell my dust. All right, uh, artist and Elon Musk ex partner Grimes. She made more from NFT sales than she ever made from music. Uh, looks like she raked in about six million dollars from her NFT collection. Uh, when asked about it, she said, "Yeah, that went very well." Said about what happened to NFTs and crypto because it got polluted fast with people trying to make as much money as possible. Yeah, they saw you make six million dollars. Uh, it was uh, the War Nymph. NFT collection via Nifty Gateway. And it was uh, feature a series of digital artworks set to her music, as well as one of one music video that sold for almost $400,000. Grimes said it was actually her brother idea. Uh, we wound up doing the first big ones. It actually did change my life. Uh, Grimes said it was his brother's idea. I think they meant to say her. Yeah, uh, let's say meant it was Elon's uh, brother there, but uh, he is involved in crypto though. So it could be. All right, uh, now Bitcoin news here. This day in crypto mm. is the Bitcoin history bug. The day Bitcoin made 184 billion Bitcoin. A lot of people don't know uh, that Bitcoin has had two serious, uh, some would say outages, some would say issues. One, there's the, I forget, they call it the double spin or the double mint bug or something like that, where someone basically generated Bitcoin out of thin air. They had to roll back the blockchain here. That happened today, folks. Or at least the article, maybe it was yesterday. So uh, core developer uh, Jeff Garzik first spotted it, commenting on the quite strange transaction outputs, which stood at a whole bunch of Bitcoin apiece. That wasn't meant to happen. Within an hour, another forum user started a thread titled Overflow Bug Serious. We need to fix ASAP. This was August 15th, 2010. Bitcoin had just encountered its biggest bug yet. So they launched in the first part of the year. So it's less than a year old at this point. Uh, the white paper was made in the tail end of 09 there. Uh, Bitcoin already endured at least four major bugs or vulnerabilities prior to this overflow bug that led to 184 billion Bitcoin being created out of thin air. Uh, the wiki lists 40 bugs of varying degrees of severity, with the most recent one discovered in February 2019. However, this was unlike anything the community had ever encountered or has seen since. Uh, this bug was uncovered, uh, its first inflation bug, given that the total supply is meant to only be 21 million. Didn't really make sense that 184 billion was, uh, you know, created there. Uh, the overflow caused a negative total transaction value, as this uh, foreign form user explained. Uh, nerd speak, nerd speak, something about a fee. Uh, the net allows anyone to voluntarily pay any amount for a fee. So when the sum was negative, the difference from the input looked like a fee. It slipped through all the checks there. Unknown attacker discovered the bug and used it to generate a ridiculously high number of bitcoins. Had they set their sights on a more modest total. It's possible their exploit had may lain undiscovered for longer than the 90 minutes it took for the scheme to be spotted. Once discovered, uh, a patch was rushed through. Within two hours, uh, developers, including Satoshi Nakamoto, were on the case, and the, the billions of Bitcoin were purged from the block. Uh, so then, once again, they got over 50%, and everything was on the up and up there. So, mm. hey, uh, momentous moment in uh, Bitcoin's history there. All right. You ready to talk a little Cardano? We're going to do Cardano, yeah. Instead of an XRP section, because that was top story, mm -hmm. we got a Cardano section brought to you by who, DZ? Brought to you by Steak, which is what he'll be making me later. Ooh. All right, uh, yeah, big, big news here. Uh, Ada brought to you by Steak. All right, Cardano Network now embraces its own wrapped Bitcoin solution. I think you're going to need it if you want a serious impact on DeFi, right? Am I right? I know I'm right. Uh, wrapped Bitcoin is a synthetic version of Bitcoin. Represented by a token through, uh, deployed through a smart contract, usually backed on a one-to-one -one basis uh, by an entity that wants the synthetic version to be used in DeFi. System is still in experimental phases, and users must be aware of the risks and security assumptions before deciding to use it. Currently, the protocol works uh, in its V1 
which involves full cus uh, custody and governance by the protocol creators there. So big news, Cardano DeFi moving on up. And now we have tokenized Bitcoin, you know, potentially. Now, this is still early. I'm not saying go, you know, get some Cardano in your Bitcoin or don't get your Bitcoin in the Cardano wallet, you know, anytime soon. Uh, just be careful with this. I, I tend to stay away from wrap Bitcoin because if I want to do DeFi, I'll just do DeFi in the native token. Right. If I want to do Ethereum DeFi, I'll just use Ethereum. If I want to do Cardano DeFi, I'll just use Cardano. Right. I don't want to wrap Bitcoin, then pull that into the ecosystem. Fair. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, this uh, intends to murder proof. To, uh, so as we move to V2, it will use trusted third parties known as guardians. Uh, these are going to be well-known projects in the ecosystem and multi-sig uh, with the multi-sig schematic. This approach is uncollateralized. And the guardians have custody of uh, the vaults there. So looks like uh, they're moving up. They're upgrading. Uh, Rat Bitcoin is also the biggest synthetic Bitcoin in the market, with a market cap of over 4.8 billion. That's the uh, the main one that you're going to see uh, in a MetaMask wallet there. So uh, looks like they have over 160,000 Bitcoin minted uh, in the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem. Just bullish for Bitcoin as uh, these protocols and these bridges. That, yeah, they're going to lock up that Bitcoin. So Bitcoin essentially pulled from the Bitcoin network and then just kind of locked up and then, you know, redeployed in uh, different ecosystems. So it's just less Bitcoin to be flown around in exchanges there. So good stuff there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I think we are pretty much close to wrapping it up. It's r coming in right at an hour. Mm -hmm. I love it. We're actually 61 minutes right now. Yeah. Should we just like dance around for eight minutes? Would that be good? No. Why eight minutes? Yeah. Why eight minutes? I don't know. This, what a dumb thing. What why a not, stupid not. suggestion. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Uh, any uh, Richard Hart news? Has he replied with anything new? Not that I know of. Not that I've seen. Uh, yeah, know. he's kind of focusing on the movie. Like, hey, hey, look at the movies. <laughs> I would do the same. We should have a. We should do a watch party for that movie. Yeah, I definitely want to watch. Yeah. Uh, the highest of stakes is uh, what we're talking yeah. about here. Uh, let's see. XRP, Doge, and Shiba are good for YouTubers to get subs, but don't actually buy that. <laughs> he called it junk. Man, Mark the Shark got some teeth there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's just. <laughs> We would have just gotten to charts. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. Well, I think that's all we got. Great show. Uh, thank you. I felt It felt great. It is great. I would never leave anything in MetaMask. It is a waiting hack. Hey, a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel that way. But uh, I haven't generated a paper Ethereum wallet myself. So maybe something to look into, though, uh, for sure. All right. Uh, I think that's all we got. Until next time, we'll be back tomorrow. And I'll be here 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Around the Blockchain. We got some great guests. Hopefully, we see you there. Easy out.